fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains fought crime and criminals throughout the early western United States. No one could match his courage, strength, or daring, and the stories of his deeds have come down to us through the generations. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear and relive one of his most thrilling adventures. The Lone Ranger, disguised as Wild Bill Riley, famous stage driver, had helped Jim Plummer win the franchise for his small stage line in the face of the opposition provided by the powerful Transcontinental Stage and Express Company. Plummer's courageous fight against the older company had won for him the respect of the entire district. Jim's mother, Ma Plummer, as she was known to everyone, was ordinarily generous and warm-hearted. But diplomacy and an even temper were not among her virtues. So when Jim noted a laughing, yelling, and hooting crowd in the vicinity of the bank, he was not surprised to find his mother, both the cause and the star performer. That's it, Ma. Give it to him. Land based in good. Yippee! I'll sure fetch them a work that time. Oh, golly. Funniest sight I ever seen. Look at Banker down. He's scared to death of her. Oh, oh, stop it. Oh, 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 hey, cut it out. Oh, God. Oh, God. Let me through here. Ma, you give me that room oh. right now. Oh, Jim, make a stop. I couldn't help it. It my fault. Get out of my oh. way, son. Now, Ma, you... Son, I chased this thieving old galoot clear oh. from the house to here, and I just now catched up to him, and you stand aside till I finish. Oh. Take that, you oh. little thing. Stand oh. back to oh. the yes, so... Give me that. Let go. Gosh, oh. mighty, the broom you got oh. yesterday, and look at it. Oh. Near worn to a frazzle. Please oh. let me whack him just once more. Oh. Just once. You've done oh. enough. Mr. Dowd, what in thunder did you do to stop this? Oh, oh don't let it get at me again. She won't. Oh, what's been happening? Hey, hey, we better step inside the bank. There's too many folks around. Hey, Ma, don't you ever think of what folks will say? Folks? Folks? Oh, land sakes, I never even noticed them. I thought we was all alone. <laughs> Come on, inside, both of you. Oh. Oh. Well, then, I want to get to the bottom of this. No, it ain't so. I ain't said nothing yet. It ain't true anyhow. Now, wait a minute, Ma. Son, he's a double-crossing old Shylock. He promised faithful he wouldn't try to collect on that note he holds until your stage line had a chance to get to earning. And then just now he had the infernal gumption to say he was going to collect. Uh, but you don't understand. Mr. Dowd, uh, is that the truth, what Ma says? Uh, yes, Mr. but... Mr. Dowd, you did promise. 
Well, right in front of other folks, you said you knew I was going to make money and you weren't in no hurry. And you was willing to wait any reasonable length of time. Oh, please, won't you let me explain? I... You can't I... explain away facts. Uh, but I don't hold that note. It belongs to the bank. <laughs> What's the difference? You and the bank are one and the same, ain't you? Oh, that's just what I'm trying to tell you, if you'll only let me get a word in edgewise. We ain't. The bank ain't mine anymore. What's that? You're sold out. I just work here now. Well... Well, who'd you sell to, then? Let me talk to him. He ain't likely to insist on payment when I show him why he won't have to wait long. Shucks, that note would have been paid before if it hadn't been for the engine troubles we had. But they're all over now. I, I know. Why, I, I got Transcontinental as good as licked to a frazzle. Just tell me where this feller is. He, he, he's coming now, uh, just outside. Great day. Lamont. That's Transcontinental's general superintendent. Uh, yes, Mrs. Plummer. Mr. Uh, Dowd? You've done just the one thing that could have beaten me. And I'll bet he done it a purpose. Now, oh, I wish I'd left the broom to home and took after him with a poker. And now, Mrs. Blammer, don't you do nothing hasty. Don't you hit me again. Well, now, what's this? Oh, well, if she was Hello, going Jim. to... Good morning, ma'am. Don't you good more than me. Ma, no, don't. <laughs> I think I understand. Dowd's spoken to you concerning that note held by the bank, eh? Well, I, I won't waste my time asking you to hold that note longer. <laughs> Very sensible of you. I haven't bought the bank, of course, but it has been bought by the company I represent. Naturally, as anxious as we are to obtain the franchise you hold to carry mail between here and Gold Flats, we'd scarcely give financial backing to a competitor. You wouldn't give your own folks vittles if you could make a profit selling them elsewhere. You and No, that... don't, Ma. Ain't no use speaking our minds and making things worse. If I have a mind to speak my mind, your mind and won't stop me. Your son is sensible, Mrs. Plummer. He's a businessman, and he understands that in business, anything's fair. Like the crooked sons Black Bart used to try, I suppose. <laughs> Bart wasn't particularly intelligent. I found that a clever man can stay within the law and still get results. Of course, you know I haven't the cash to pay you. <laughs> oh, yes, I looked into all that before I suggested the Transcontinental buy the bank. No doubt you'll attempt to raise the money elsewhere. But if you'll accept a word of advice, you'll save yourself the trouble. I think you'll find none of the private banks in this district will care to accommodate you. Because your outfits warn them not to. Naturally. Well, I'll have to sell my stage line to pay. With Transcontinental, the only possible purchaser. And I bet you won't offer a thin dime over what the note calls for. We'd be foolish to pay more than necessary. But my equipment, together with that franchise, is worth 20 times more than I owe. Then you should congratulate me. For what? <laughs> for picking up an excellent bargain. Come on, Ma. Let's get out of here. No you staying. There's a feller I want to see. Be sensible, Jim. Don't try to fight us. Come to terms and save what you can. Not till I talk to the feller that's helped us out before. Who? A gent that's just as smart as you are, you high binding slicker. Wild Bill Riley. <laughs> Jim Plummer, looking for Wild Bill Riley, found him in the cafe. As he explained his predicament, he never suspected that the man he appealed to was the famous Lone Ranger. While Jim finished his story, the Lone Ranger led the way outside and... Do you see the spot I'm in, Bill? What in the latest can I do? Hmm. Kind of looks like he's got you this time. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon I was foolish thinking you could see some way out. I... Well, you've already done so much for me, Bill. I, I guess I get the feeling you could fix most anything. So he's just the same as told you. You won't be able to borrow cash from anybody, eh? <laughs> Who'd have the nerve to loan me 5000 when Transcontinental tells him not to? Nobody I've heard of. Transcontinental's got plenty of cash. Yeah, that's the trouble. They got it to burn. Well, that's not what I mean. Huh? What I mean is that they got so much cash, it might be a good idea for you to get what you need from them. I don't savvy. Use their cash to pay them what you owe. You out of your head? Well, it's just a notion I had. Now, wait, Bill. You, you wasn't thinking of, of stealing it from him, was you? Bill, I wouldn't have it. I hope I... the idea I had was different. You've been a real friend to me, Bill. It ain't just that I couldn't use stolen cash. It's, well, you're too good a friend for me to let you do anything that'll get you on the wrong side of the law. Suppose you go back inside, Jim. But, but yeah. I... <clears throat> let me worry about this. Well, where are you going? Not far and not for long. I, I... You hear me? Quit worrying and join your friends in there and put this out of your head. I've got a notion all this is going to turn out all right. Well, I... I don't leave till I see you do like you say. 
Sure, Bill, but remember, you, you take care of yourself. Sure thing. It's all right, Scout. Get up. Get up. All right, Bat. Come on. You have to follow Mr. Lamont? Right. You said you heard Black Bart mention once he suspicioned him to be the Lone Ranger. Well, what of it? If Bart was right, that's one hombre I don't aim to tango with. Bart was probably wrong. But I don't... And want... I think you'll do as I tell you, Bat. But listen, Mr. Lamont, Oh, that... would you like the law to know there's a reward on your head? You've held up transcontinental stages, Bat. As long as you take orders, I won't turn you in, but no longer. You win. Get after him. I'm not asking you to do anything against the law. All I want is a report on his movements. Right. You can still see him. Now on your way. Get along there, boy. Get along. The Lone Ranger headed north out of Cooperstown, leaving the trail to enter a forest that stretched for miles until it climbed the slopes of the distant hills. Inside the forest, he followed no visible trail. But when he had penetrated a distance of two or three miles, he came upon a small but well-hidden camp and... Tai Kimosabe! Aye! Whoa, scout, whoa! You, you got news? I... Silver, old fellow! It's great to see you again, old boy. Uh, uh. Silver get plenty lonesome. But I can't take him to town with me while I'm Bill Riley, Tonto. He'd be recognized. Mm, that's right. Today I ride as the masked man again, and Silver goes with me. There, trouble? I've been followed here, Kimosabe. Who follow? A fellow I believe you'll remember. I'll tell you about that later. Uh -huh. Right now I have too much to explain, and it has to be done before he gets close enough to hear us. Why are you not trap him? We need him, Tonto. But he'll be of more use free than a prisoner. Three hours later, Bat, whipping and spurring his mount, raced down the main street of Cooperstown, never slowing his pace until he reached the offices of the Transcontinental Stage and Express Company. Whoa! Whoa, blast you! Whoa! Mr. Lamont. Wait. But I gotta see you. One moment. Very well. Go ahead. I wanted to be sure no one was around. I followed that fella. Yes? Followed him right into them woods north of here. He met a redskin. Go on. And he's gonna hold up the bank. What's that? It's a fact. I heard him say it. But why? To get that note you're holding over Jim Plummer. He figures if you ain't got that note, you can't make Plummer pay. When will the hold up be? As soon as he can get back to town. Bat, we've got him. Come on. Yeah. There's the sheriff. Sheriff? Oh, sheriff. You calling me? Get your deputies. Surround the bank. It's going to be held up. Huh? What's that? Where'd you get your information? Never mind that now. I know what I'm talking about. Get your men. Right. Mike! Yeah. Roof! Yeah. Bay! Oh, get yeah. your guns! Head for the bank! What's the trouble? What's going on? There's a hold up plan. Hurry. What's that? It's down to the bank. Come on, run for it. A masked man on a white horse. Get that fella! Shoot him down! Blast him out of the saddle! How he beat you here? He got here before you. He held up the bank! Oh, there he goes! Down. Stop him! Stop him! Oh, Getting away! Shoot again! Miss! We're just wasting the lead. Who was he? What did he take? Oh. Anybody heard? Doubt what happened here. How much was stolen? Uh, no cash at all, Mr. Lamont. Well, what did he take? Nothing that could do him any good. What was it, you fool? Only the note, Mr. Lamont. Only the note that was signed by Jim Plummer. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. After the escape of the masked man from Dowd's bank, Lamont verified the banker's statement that only the note for the money Jim Plummer had borrowed was missing. It's gone all right. See, Sheriff? It was kept in this cash box. Well, the box is empty, sure enough. Dowd, you positive that's all you took? Did you keep nothing else in this box? I, I don't know. Don't know? I took care of the matter myself, Sheriff. That note was important to Transcontinental. I couldn't trust it to anyone else. Yeah, I see. Only the note was taken. And it being gone means you ain't got no evidence that Jim Plummer owes you cash. And without that evidence, you can't proceed against him. That the fact? Yes. To put it another way, ain't nobody gains by this but Jim. But it wasn't Jim held me up, Sheriff. I'd have known him if he had. Well, as a matter of fact, Jim was home with his ma. I can swear to that on my own account. I'd just been down that way before I met up with Mr. Lamont here. I'm not accusing Jim. However, if you wish a suspect... Yeah? Suppose you look for that friend of his, Wild Bill Riley, or whatever the fellow's called. I believe it'd be interesting to know whether he could be found or not. Uh-huh. That's a thought. Reckon I'll look into that. Uh, by the way... Yes? That fellow was with you when he yelled to me, Mr. Lamont. Didn't you say his name was Bat? Bat Clemens. Why? Well, it seems somehow familiar like I ought to know him. That's all. Bat Clemens. Nope, the name ain't any I've heard of all. If you don't mind, I think we're wasting time. Get after Bill Riley, Sheriff. I'll wager you'll find he's not in town. Won't take long to find out. Carry on, Dowd. I'll drop in later. I, I hope you're not blaming me for this, Mr. Lamont. It wasn't your fault. I... Come along, Sheriff. I reckon I'll look into the cafe first. You have men on the trail? I sent each one of my deputies out with the posse. Don't know if they'll stand much chance catching up to that horse the crook was riding, though. Excuse me, Sheriff. I want a word with Bat. I'll drop into your office later to hear what you've discovered. Sure, sure, any time. Bat. What's up? Why ain't you told the sheriff about that hombre's camp and where to look for him? You ain't said nothing about who you figure he is. I he... can't. Huh? That I put those reward notices with a note. They were taken too. Them notices that was put out for me? Exactly. Oh, golly. If I told the sheriff where to look and he caught that masked fella, he'd not only find Plummer's note, but those notices as well. You'd go to jail, Bat. And they'd ask me why as protecting a man wanted by the company I work for. Something that wouldn't be easy to explain. Well, I'll be doggone. You know who stole that note, you know where to look for him, and yet you don't dare tell the law about it. Just so. I couldn't even suggest that Wild Bill and the Lone Ranger were the same. I understand how people reason. If the news got out that the Lone Ranger was on Plummer's side, it would only be natural that the people around here would start to suspect me. Uh-huh, that's so. Which is the kind of talk neither Transcontinental nor I can afford. Mr. Lamont, he's got you. Ain't a blame thing you can do. Correct. I can do nothing, but you can. Huh? Me? Could you find that camp again? In daylight, I could, but I ain't. Could you reach it before dark? Sure, but I ain't gonna. Afraid to tangle with the Lone Ranger? I am, and I ain't a bit ashamed to admit it. Listen to me. When he held up the bank, we cut him off, and he had to leave by the South Trail. He can't come back through town to reach his camp. He'll have to circle Rainbow Canyon to reach the forest, which means he'll be delayed several hours. If you left now, you could get to his camp well ahead of him. Uh Uh-huh. That don't interest me none at all. Don't be a fool. You'd have only the Indian to deal with. You could take him off guard. The Lone Ranger would ride into camp suspecting nothing. Take him yourself or prepare a trap for him. Do what you think best. But if you succeed, there's a thousand dollars in it for you. A thousand? Another thing. What'll happen to you if those reward notices fall into the wrong hands? I forgot about them. It'd pay to remember. Well? All right, I'll do it. I just about have to. Good. But that means I'll have to hurry to reach them woods before it's too dark to see. There's nothing to keep you here. Then I'm on my way. Meet you later, Mr. Lamont. Several hours later, deep in the forest, Tonto awaited the return of his masked friend. The faithful Indian had built a small fire and was crouched beside it. Suddenly, his keen ears caught the sound of stealthy movements in the underbrush behind him. He whirled and leaped to his feet. Who there? Ice them. What you want? Keep reaching. Conversation ain't called for. And don't make no sudden moves. Maybe I might figure you wasn't friendly and let you have it. Oh, what you want? Hold still while I see if you're armed. (laughs) Nothing but this knife, huh? All right, you can drop your hands now. Uh, but if you get notions, remember I can pull this trigger faster than you can move to get me. You can't. No, you don't. Keep your distance, Injun. Let's see. And that's the best place, I reckon. Uh-huh, and there's a sapling that'll do real well. Pick up that rope and come over here. How will not do that? No. <laughs> that fans you, didn't it? When you follow orders, the next one will drill you square. I don't have to keep you alive, Injun. That all depends on how you behave. Well, what you want... Decided again being stubborn, huh? It's better. See this sapling? Oh, uh, under see him. I figure your part will have to pass right through here to reach your camp. Uh. Well, with a sapling and that rope you're holding in your hand, we're fixing up a snare. Your sidekick ain't the gent I'd choose to meet up with in the dark. 
But dangling from the end of a rope, I reckon he'll keep till morning. Bat watched grinning while Tonto obeyed his directions and constructed the snare. Dusk swiftly deepened to night as Tonto worked. The trap completed, he was forced to saddle Scout. He put out the glowing embers of the campfire with earth. Then Bat's gun covered him while he mounted. His captor followed suit and... Now, Injun, listen close. I wouldn't want you to misunderstand and maybe get hurt by it, Savvy. Uh... You're leading a way out of here. It's powerful dark, but still there's light enough from the moon to aim by if you make a break for it. Uh... And don't think because you're leading a way that you can lose me in these woods. We're leaving the grub you got here behind. So either you find a way out for us, or go hungry till you do. Me, Savvy. Then stay just ahead of me. Get going. Get him up, Scout. Come on, fella. Save for an occasional sharp command from Bat, the two men guided their mounts between the closely spaced trees in almost complete silence. Only the moon, its light filtering through leafy branches, provided illumination. Bat grew slowly uneasy as time passed and they failed to reach open country. Blast you, Injun, you're up to something. It's not far now. That's what you said half an hour ago. You wait. You see. Look here. You... Hey, what are you leaning over for? What's that? Oh, stop. Oh, oh. Cut the rope. I mean, it's you. Me take gun. My neck. My neck's most broken. Are you not hurt? What happened? Why, blast you? No you stand still. Me got gun now. You fooled me. You tricked me after all. You sneaking redskin. You went in a circle. You brought me right back here to your camp. That's why you stooped over. You died so I'd get caught in that snare. <laughs> I was caught in my own trap. <laughs> Several hours later, that same night. What the sheriff wants you for, Jim? It was about my note that was stole from the bank today. He, he seemed to think Wild Bill might have had something to do with it. Bill ain't no thief. Oh, of course he ain't, Ma. Only I... What the... Heavens to bet. Mass. Don't slap leather. But what in thunder do you... Examine these and you'll understand. Adios. Ma, who in thunder could that have been? Adios, Silver. You hear that? Silver. Why, Silver's the name of the horse the Lone Ranger rides. And it was said by some the hombre held up the bank called his horse Silver. There, you see, I told you Wild Bill wouldn't steal. But the masked man don't either. I wonder what he wanted. Well, if you had sent, you'd look at them papers he left there and see. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was so excited. I... And still are. What do they say? Reward notices. Huh? And a map with writing on it. Well, I'll be switched. Hey, you ain't told me what... Now, I'll have to there. Read them for yourself. I ain't the time to explain. I got a ride. It was almost noon the next day when Jim Plummer re-entered town and rode towards the bank accompanied by a prisoner. At the bank, they both drew rein. Oh, 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 oh. What's up, Jim? What have you got Matt Clemens tied for? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Bat. Get out of that saddle. We're going inside. You ain't got no right to do this to me. That's your notion. Stand back, folks. I can't answer your questions now, but you'll hear the whole story later on. Make way. Let me go. Come on there, Jim. What are you doing? Holler inside the bank, Sheriff, and you'll find out. Bat, get in there. What's the meaning of this? Plummer, why are you holding a gun on this man? Mr. Lamont, I'll tell you what... Shut up. I'll do the talking here. Jeff, look at these. Reward notices for Bart McCabe. Reward notices put out by Transcontinental and Pacific and signed by Mr. Lamont as general superintendent. Well, I'll be... Bart McCabe. That's why there was something familiar about this hombre. Lamont, why did you tell everybody his name was Clemens? Why, I didn't recognize him. I thought he was... You signed the notices? At my office in the East. I've signed dozens of them. I can't be expected Christ to remember... Christ, you, Lamont, you're selling me out. Sheriff, I'll tell you the truth of it. Lamont brought me here to do as he ordered by threatening to turn me over to the law if I didn't. That's He's ridiculous. Been... Sheriff, you certainly don't credit a statement like that. Hmm. These are notices issued at different times. 
The reward was hiked up each time, too. And this in here says that your company will pay $6,000 for Bat's capture. That right? Uh, of course. Hey, now that... Bat, you keep still. But mind you say you didn't bring Bat here, that you didn't know for sure who he was. And that's the truth. Well, maybe it is. It'd be a bit more convincing, though, if you was willing to pay these rewards. To me, I brought him in. Well, I, uh... I owe you 5000 and you owe me six. Tear up that note and I'll call it square. I haven't the note. You know that. It was stolen. I'm willing to bet it wasn't. What's what? that? Wild Bill. I've heard talk of as a masked man held at the bank. Well, he wouldn't steal. How'd you get in here? Oh, I just came in quiet like. Thought I'd see what was going on before announcing myself. That's him. That's the Lone Ranger. He's just disguised. No fool keeps still. <laughs> him, the Lone Ranger? Wild Bill, the masked man? <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> Bad, you running off with the mouth, something fierce. <laughs> I've heard about the Lone Ranger. Why, him and Bill don't even talk a lot. But I'm telling you... That'll be enough out of you, Bat. Mister, if that note wasn't stolen, where is it? Well, if it wasn't stolen, it'll have to still be there, won't it? You looked in the cash box and didn't find it? Well, look around some other places. I'm willing to bet the Lone Ranger just hid it somewhere to make it look like it was stolen. By heavens, if he did, there's just one place he could have put it. Any place else, it would have been found. Where's that? Behind the strong box here. Bill, I've been hunting all over for you. Thought I held up the bank, here. Eh? Well, you're Jim's friend and nobody knew where he was at the time. Well, it's I... It's here. That's just where he'd hid it. Well, Chef, seems to me... Even if you did suspicion, Bill, there couldn't be no very serious charge against him as long as nothing was stolen. <laughs> All this excitement about a hold-up that wasn't a hold-up. <laughs> you going to tear up that note, Mr. Lamont? You're making a clear thousand on the deal, Lamont. And you got to pay me if you don't. But I, I guess it's fair enough. <laughs> Bill, what was you doing while you was gone? Oh, just trying to find a way to help you, Jim. Well, thanks, Bill. But the Lone Ranger saved you the trouble. Uh-huh. <laughs> and look how slick he done it. Without stealing the note, he kept Mr. Lamont here from making me sell out the Transcontinental. He fixed it so as I could pay Transcontinental what I owed him. And best of all, I paid him with their own cash. <laughs> Did you ever hear the like? <laughs> The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated.